Hi, my name's Tom. I'm an edit assistant and a graphic designer. I'm now going to show you how to make a reflection in Adobe Photoshop CS4. Right, let's take it away. In true Blue Peter style fashion, here is one that I've made earlier. If this decides to work. Come on. Okay. So you can use the reflection on images. I've just decided to use it on text because it's just a simpler, simpler way to show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to start off brand new, fresh with a brand new canvas. So a quick shortcut to do that is Apple N or Control N if you're on a PC. This will give you the new canvas settings. So just for argument's sake, I'm going to use an A4 size canvas. If you set your resolution to 300 dpi, that's a generally a good setting to have for print-based work if you were going to print this out. So just hit OK there. So you've got a, an A4 sized sheet of paper, say, there. So I'm going to rotate the image. So if you click image, image rotation, 90 degrees, 90 degrees clockwise. And now we, there we go, we've made the whole image landscape. So to get that black background, I'm going to use the fill tool or paint bucket tool, which the shortcut, if for all the shortcut nerds out there, is G. And then I'm going to select the color that I want to use using the color palettes down here. So if you double click on the palettes there, you'll get this color picker. So you can choose whatever color you want, green, blue, pink. So I'm just going to use a black color there, which makes it easier. Just hit OK. So I've got my background layer selected there. For this case, you don't need to worry about it. We're just going to make the background black. You can change it if you feel that you need to. So you just click in the space. And now we've got a nice black background there. Just going to zoom in, just to make it a bit easier. That's Apple Plus or Control Plus if you're using a PC. So to create the text, as I used video jug earlier, I'm just going to do, recreate that again. If you get and go back to your tool palette here, you'll see there's a T, that's your text tool. Shortcut for that, again, is T on the keyboard. So I'm just going to click anywhere in the space, and you can see that I've brought up the text tool. So now I'm just going to type video jug. Now in the top here, you can change the settings of the text. I'm going to use a slightly easier font to work with. So if you just click on the little drop down menu here, that will bring up all your different fonts that you have stored. I'm going to use a simple Calibri font. So we can now go through and change using this little drop down menu here if you want it in italics, if you want it just to be a regular shape, what have you. So again to the right, you can change the size. That's obviously a bit too big for our canvas. I'm just going to click in there, highlight the text and type whatever size. Again, this can vary to however you want to use it. We could do 150 for now, it just makes it easier. So there we go, and there we have our text. Obviously we don't want to use grey because it looks a bit crap. So we're going to use change the colour. So if you want to change the colour in the text, with your text layer selected, click back on the text and now you've reselected your text again. So I'm going to highlight it just by clicking and dragging over the text. And on this menu here, if you double click on the little block of colour, you bring up the colour picker that we were using earlier. Again, you can drag around and use whatever colour. I'm going to use white, so that's easiest to demonstrate with. Now to deselect out of the text tool, I find it's easiest to bring your mouse over to the tool palette and select the top, which is the move tool, again, which is V for you shortcut nerds out there. 
There we go, there we have video jug in all its glory. So moving on to the reflection. It's quite a simple process. If you come back over to your layers palette here, if you right click on the layer, you get all these lovely new options. So I'm going to select duplicate layer. And I'm going to name the layer just because it makes it easier later on if you're using lots of layers to find stuff again. So video jug, text, reflection. Hit OK. Now I'll have two layers saying the same thing, which is exactly what you want. So in order to create the reflection, I'm going to use the shortcut Apple T, which allows you to transform the layer shape and size. So using the handles, as we have around here, you can stretch, you can shrink, you can do all manner of actions there. So what I'm going to do is Apple T. I'm going to use the top handle here, and I'm just going to click and hold and drag down so drag it below the, the, our first layer. So once you get your, you can adjust as, as you see fit. I mean, there's no real rule on that. So I'm gonna put it to about there. And then hit enter. And that will finalize the, the image. So now you should have two layers, which say video jug, or whatever texture you're using, or whatever image you're using. One the right way up, one upside down. Okay, in order to be able to add the reflection effect to this layer, you need to rasterize the image. Now this flattens it and takes it as the pixels that it is. So in order to do this, there's a couple of ways. One quick way is to right click on the image that you want to use to rasterize, to flatten. And you can select rasterize type. Now, I won't be able to go back and change the text because it's flattened the image. So make sure you've got your text set how you want it when you get to this stage. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, we're gonna add a quick mask layer. Now to do this, come over to your layers palette over here on the right hand side. There's a small icon which has a square and a circle inside it. So I'm gonna click that. That's gonna add the layer mask. Now what it'll do is it'll add this little square box to the side of it and that's exactly what we want there. Now to make the reflection grade, I'm going to use the gradient tool. Now the gradient tool is found underneath generally where the paint bucket is. So if you click and hold, you can get the different options that we want to select. Okay, another shortcut way which I prefer to use is holding shift and G and you can select the different options that that tool can offer. So click and hold, gradient tool. Now making sure that you have this white box there selected, we're gonna come up to the top here where you have your settings. So I'm gonna double click on the nice little fade we have there and I'm gonna select the white to nothing to opaque setting. As you can see there, you've got white at the top here and sort of square blocks there. This is suggest that there's nothing behind it. And just hit OK. Now, what we're going to do is click and drag over the image to create the desired reflection. Now, this might take a few goes. It took me a couple of goes last night when I was trying to, sorry, I shouldn't all that time for that. Um, so we're going to click and drag over the image to create the grade. This might take you a few goes, so if you use Apple Z, that can jump you back a turn and set you back to how it was. So it's just a case of just going through and just testing it really and having a couple of goes. So you might think that looks all right, might think it, might think it doesn't. So again, clicking and dragging and dragging up over the image. Now to get straight line, if you hold shift, that'll snap the line to a straight straight line for the grade. So holding shift, you can snap it to the line. So we're going to kick and drag over it like that. So now we've got the reflection text there. Now to do the little effect that I've done there of putting it at a slightly cool but weird angle, 
we need to rasterize the shape, the, sorry, the text layer that we have here. Now, again, to do this, I'm going to show you another way this time. So with the layer selected, just by clicking on it, if you go to image, no, sorry, if you go to layer, rasterize, type, that will flatten the image. Now, to make that, that slight perspective change, if you highlight both your layers by holding down Apple or Control if you're using a PC and click on the layer above. Now both your layers will be highlighted blue. You can now press Apple T, which will give you the transform options. So you can now go through, if you right click on a handle, change the option to distort, and that what you're now able to do is using the handles, you can now change it to whatever crazy angle you see fit. So I'm just going to make it with a little bit of an odd perspective there. Now again, if you want to keep the layers as still as possible, if you hold down shift, that'll snap it to the edge. So it snap it to a straight line. So we're just going to drag that one down like that. Maybe adjust this one here. So I'm just holding down shift and using the handles to manipulate the shape. I'm just going to reduce that one slightly. So there you will have the image in the kind of perspective that you want. Now to set that, all you have to do is hit enter. And there you have your reflection with a kind of crazy cool angle.